Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Terrific Tuesday. It is that wonderful day that we thank God. We're right near the middle of the week. God has been such a terrific and awesome God. I hope you had a wonderful time of celebrating Independence Day for this country and for all of that which God gives us to celebrate. And I hope you were safe and you did everything that you needed to do. You know, let's look at the Word of God and find out what God has to say to us today. In the book of James, the fifth chapter, uh, verses 7 through through 12, a very powerful passage. It begins to talk about patience and endurance, patience and endurance. You know, I think this is a pivotal time to talk about patience and endurance. Many of us, we've just come off the heels of celebrating Juneteenth and thank God it is now a national holiday, a time in which we have seen and patiently waited how so many persons who were enslaved patiently waited and heard the news at last that they were free. You know, it's amazing. It is just like us in the natural and in the spiritual. There were those who had really been set free but did not know it. Did you know what Christ did for us at Calvary? He set us free from the penalty and all of the payment of sin. But Jesus did it all. We just didn't know it because no one has shared with us the good news as of yet. Today, I hope you will hear the good news that God loves you and that God wants you to know that you have a wonderful place in his heart as well as an eternal place with him in paradise. Let's talk about the text out of James. You know, James is that very powerful passage that begins to help us to understand about in life, it is important for us to be uh, unilaterally focused on what God has in store for us. You know, in earlier parts in the book of James, he talks about being double-minded. He talks about not having our sights and our sails focused on God and how we must make sure that people see what is really on the inside of us coming out, and that is the power of God. Here he talks about patience and endurance. Look at the text. He talks about be patient for the Lord's return. Now he was writing to a group of believers who knew that Christ had paid the penalty for their sins. He had come and spent 40 days with those early disciples. Then he went back to heaven, but then they saw him leave on the cloud and he said, I'm coming back again. So now they have to keep on waiting. They've heard about Jesus and now they're looking for him to return. And he's reminding them, the writer of James, I need for you to patiently wait for his return. In the text, he says, consider how farmers plant a seed. It rains and then eventually the crop will come up. Oftentimes we must remind ourselves that God is doing work that we don't see. When you plant a seed, the seed is underground. While it's underground, while it's germinating, while it's growing, there's a lot of work going on because it has to take roots and go down before it comes up. Too often times, my brothers and sisters, we are so impatient in our instant society. I think we want everything fast. We want fast food. We want fast service. You know, we want everything to happen so fast and so much so that we forget for God to do a complete and perfect work in us. It sometimes take a little time. So James is telling them, I want you to be patient and I want you to endure. He says, take courage because the coming of the Lord is near. I want you to persevere. You know, oftentimes in this life, we are right at where God would have us to be. And then we decide to take an exit. And then we try to get back where we left off. And you and I both know how difficult that is. Have you ever been on a diet and then you were doing so well and then you fell off because you ate something and then it was hard to get back reestablished? It's the same way spiritually. It is the same way in all of our lives. That's the reason he's writing them and telling them patiently endure. He gives examples. He says, you know, the present suffering that you've been in, it won't last forever. This is only for a time frame. This is only just a test. Oftentimes we must remind ourselves, God is preparing us for the things that he has in store for us. And we have to be prepared for what God has in store. So that means we have to go through a little bit of what we have right now. So we will be stronger for when the real moment comes. You know, anytime you're practicing, it's just like now we're in the qualifiers and we have seen the qualifiers happening for the uh, Olympics. Now, everybody's had to qualify, but they've had to practice. They've had to endure. They had to be ready for when the real match came, when the real challenge comes. Let's you and I be ready because the challenge is coming and do know that God is going to be, be preparing you. So be patient and endure because in patience you'll possess your soul. God bless you. Have a smile upon you and I'll see you on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org and select sow a seed from the homepage. 
Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Fountain.